check. I don't get sad often, but I do get sad when things get taken away from me. I was revoked access to the term at the end of the day by like you because apparently I say it too much. I get sad when Baja Blasts aren't available at Taco Leb anymore and I get sad and I go on like US 441 and all I see are CRBs. Listen, I get the cargo space, but the world needs more variety, okay? It needs more sass. It needs more color, more socks with sandals, less grays, blacks, and whites. I swear to God, if Taylor tells me that having a truck in gray is a cool looking color, it's just gonna start a war, okay? You wanna know what a cool color is? Lava orange, not gray, okay? It's just not something I really want to do. But the equivalent of the Baja Blast being ripped out of our cold, dead hands is happening in the automotive scene. And today we're going to be talking about just that, just why, just how, and just who dared to take away the beloved blocky four-seater. We're going to be talking about just what happened to the Mitsubishi Evo. Jab, rear hand punch, roll over, knife hand. And if you're looking for the big dot boys with the wheels, the tires, and the suspension, the wheel and tire packages, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com where we have our very own things like our very own wheel brand that we just launched called Artisa Artform Wheels. They're ultra light, they're monoblock, they're deco directional, meaning they rotate on, on different on each side. It looks super nice and they're super good looking and a super focused attention to detail. That's the plug. Okay. And before you go over there, please be sure to drop a comment below on what you'd like to see us talk about next in the next episode of What Happened. Let's jump into this 4G foursome, this big wang wonder, this turbo lag loving community, the Mitsubishi evolution itself. Evo itself was a car that was alive and well from 1992 until 2016. And for those living under a rock, the Mitsubishi evolution was touted as one of the best performance tuner cars to come out of Mitsubishi and likely, dare I say it, ever made. Throughout its 10 generations of turbo goodness, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution offered things that even my grandmother couldn't offer. I don't know, Betty, maybe a little less Ace Ventura and a little bit more unconditional love. It would have been really great, especially as I was a child. And while the uh, introduction of the platform was really just to show that Mitsubishi was a powerhouse in both group rally and general automotive racing, it didn't take long for the Evo to get like bit by the bug. The bug of the macro economic steroids of the 1990s, especially in Japan. If you're wondering why all the cool stuff came out of Japan in the 90s, it's because they had a lot of bloody money. They just had more than anyone else. They were just doing good, okay? Didn't last very long. That's why you saw a lot of them go away in the 2000s. The Evo would go from a slightly soft, radicalized Gallant to an ever-growing, aggressive-looking four-door sedan where the front had more inlets, mesh holes, and cut-ins than I used to make paper planes in third grade. Look at the fourth gen specifically. We're gonna jump through a couple of these, but you had the big old dinner plate headlights that Subaru stole for the Bug Eye, practically. Even with the increases to the car's performance over the years, most notably its fine-tuning of the iconic 4G63T, the community overseas truly began to love these cars for their capabilities of modification, ownership, accessibility, and space. Space is a much bigger deal than you probably think, specifically with this car, because having two extra doors is pretty damn nice when you live in a country where just owning one car is hard and expensive enough, and you really don't have space for one. You don't really get a three-car garage to keep your boxes like here in the USA, okay? But each generation of evolution continued to capitalize on what it was known for. Functional power with a strong foundation and one hell of a turbo light. The fifth generation got some flared fenders to the car, a big old wing that was ready for takeoff, and a widened stance that started to cement the car's presence in a crowd. I would really tout the Evo 5 is one it really started to get just a little bit wider, a little bit bigger, and it made it just look like it belonged. The sixth was a short model year from 99 to 01, which didn't have as much attention, but still had the classic 276 horsepower and teacup style fogs versus the predecessor. They started getting smaller. They realized you didn't need to put them all the way down there, but it looked really cool. Kind of like the Porsche slant nose. The seventh generation is where things truly began to get a little spicy. Mitsubishi was forced to run in WRC versus Group A because it got caught with its trousers down due to the rules about homologation. But by then, the community was well enough established where it wasn't really a huge hit to the end line for Mitsubishi. People already loved the car. You know the taillights, the headlights, and body style from about a mile away. And pro tip, it was in Too Fast, Too Furious with Paul Walker doing reverse gear things that cars like that just 
they shouldn't do. It's also an Evo 7, not an 8. Anyway, the Evo 8 was God's green gift to Earth, okay? And Evo introduced the United States market, which was a big deal. The demand was big, it was huge, it was wide. And Mitsubishi saw Subaru gobbling up every little chocolate bunny in the market, especially in the United States. It was very popular. And while the eighth, ninth, or 10th generation are what we talk about nowadays, a lot of people thought Mitsubishi was crushing it. They were doing fairly good. The Evo wasn't a bad platform, and every single year, they really did decide to try and improve it, make it a little bit better, a little sassy, a little wider, a little heavier, but you know, it was living large. And then one day, just like your good friend, they just quit. It just stopped. The D word, not that. The discontinuation of the Evo. It was kind of sad, okay? Rumors began in March of 2011 after someone accidentally spilled the Bush's baked beans in an Auto Car UK magazine. And while magazine initially declined the actual accusation, they it took a couple years, but it turns out the little rumor was inevitably true because they decided a couple years after that the Mitsubishi Evo would be discontinued in 2015. <gasps> Scary. Wow. Who knew that was going to happen besides a leak five years earlier. So what happened? What exactly happened to the Mitsubishi evolution? The one thing that people may not remember about Mitsubishi is that they've always had an absolutely terrible, terrible time keeping money in their pocket consistently. They are like not very good at budgeting and through mergers, partnerships, alliances, and random ideas hijacking their focus, Mitsubishi has never really been able to establish a solid, consistently running and profitable organization. And this is actually a pretty big deal. You could trace back some instances stability back to the independence and equity stake share Chrysler gave back to them in the early 1990s and then immediately jumped into the alliance with Group PCA in like 1999. And then you had MHI or Mitsubishi Heavy Industries participate in a 540 billion yen emergency bailout of Mitsubishi Motors in 2005, to which Mitsubishi reported with trying to say that nothing was wrong and that they were just gonna keep making more in Evos, because that was apparently like the market segment that they wanted to go after. Really after 2005 is when they should have stopped making the Evo. The bio was temporary because by 2010, they were marketed essentially and made the seventh largest vehicle producer, being the fourth largest vehicle producer just a few years before. I mean, guys, Mitsubishi was like the Japanese Watergate. Stuff just kept popping up. There were scandals all over. You had a scandal in early 2000s that had a recall due to a cover up from 1983, a terrible North American credit deal in 2003 and a divorce from Daimler Chrysler in 2005 and they just did not have the best of economic luck I and mean, if you pair that with the units dropping from 1.6 million in 2000 to sub a million in 2009 with a recession hitting at the same time they ran out of money. They just didn't have any. And it took them a long time to even think about what they were going to do. In fact, back in 2010, even if Mitsubishi maintained their annual operating profits of $322 million, 322 million buckaroos, it would take them over 20 years to wipe out their $7.7 billion bailout that they had to go and pay for, including interest, fees, legal, all that sort of stuff. The diminishing amount of money meant Mitsubishi didn't have a wide net to throw and ultimately began making decisions on what platforms to keep and which to remove. And the Evo trim on the Lancer body was one of those necessary toenail clips. It just wasn't a thing that anybody really wanted to do, but it was the decision that we had to do. Well, many people claim that this model trim also has to do with consumer shifting interest. That's not entirely true with Mitsubishi specific. And in all honesty, they really just didn't have any other option because they couldn't afford it. The money wasn't there for it and the production wasn't there for it. The international interest wasn't there for it anymore. And if Mitsubishi truly wanted to survive, there was really only one drug left in existence for it to cling on to for the rest of its days. And the United States kind of supplied that drug a little bit like a dealer supplies a drug to somebody that you really shouldn't. And then they become dependent on it. And it's just a really bad relationship. And then it's called... SUVs. I mean, that was really what Mitsubishi did. And while sports cars are typically lost leaders in automotive businesses, Mitsubishi's entire lineup were lost leaders with absolutely no end in sight. None of their cars were doing anything. The USA introduced them to SUVs and they're like, oh, yeah, but done were the days of turbocharged 276 horsepower goodness and in were the days of whatever the the Mirage is. I'm not sure, but you can't actually get any options on the car, but you can get it for $14,900. I don't even know how you can make a car for $14,900. It is shocking to me that that is even possible or safe. And the final other reason for the Evo to be dead and likely remain dead is simply because the market for that type of car has really passed. 
Yes, and a turbocharged four-cylinder tuner with relatively unflattering interior and some flatline power that hasn't grown too much over time isn't gonna hit this audience as much as it did back in the day. Even with the STI, all right, it had the dedicated fan base. It had a similar challenge a few years back and required almost an absolute overhaul to the interior quality of the car for the sacrifice of a performance improvement. And you can look at the horsepower and torque numbers versus the interior focus improvements and you'll see what I mean, specifically with the STI. Mitsubishi not only sees the fact that they, they have a hill to climb and they're at the bottom of it and the top of the hill has the likes of the EcoBoost Mustangs, the nice interior STIs, the Audi A Sport models, Focuses, Zs, Supras and more, but it also has to do it in a way with a car they haven't made in like ever with new value props and new things that they're just not going to be able to do. Mitsubishi is a brand that some of us have been blessed to know during its heyday from incredible rally machines to some of the best performing fastest cars both on the drag strip and on the street and they're still some of the most well performing cars out there with the right driver and while the cars are now owned by some of the rare few that still remember these vehicles the odds of Mitsubishi returning to the fray without some sort of collaboration or heavy heavy rental influence is likely and more honestly about zero it's just not coming back. But what do you think? Think Mitsubishi will bring it back or do we need to pay some respects to them and go check out their website because it's really sad. Let us know in the comments below. And of course, if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension for your newly acquired Evo or otherwise, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com. And don't forget, you can get wheel and tire packages in as little as seven days. And it also saves you mounts and balancing and shipping. That's all I got. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. We will see you later. Peace.